Ah, I see. Hello, everybody! Welcome Jim back! Jim <laughs> you said that with the tone as if you meant that to interrupt the opening, but like, we're super yeah. delayed. <laughs> you know what this calls for? What does it call for, Ronnie? Uh, Dr. Pepper. We should probably get out of the cold. Yeah. I agree. That sucks up here. I was gonna say, as everyone else is walking inside from the roof, Gino would like to stop Emmanuel as the, before he goes in. Randy. Uh, yeah, huh? I'm sorry I hurt you. It's fine. I'll probably hurt you at some point. In fact, I'm pretty sure I, that was like the first thing we did when we started today. Uh, like yesterday today when I flashbanged us behind that museum. So it's probably fair. Yeah, I guess. It really hurt though. Don't do that again. Mm. Gives a nod. Do you know we'll wait for Emmanuel to go inside and follow him? You're big. You're in the way. I'm All sorry. Right. sorry. Okay. <laughs> follow me. As you all enter into it, you hear a very large thud, and then the sound of bodies colliding with one another, the sound of struggling, and a very quick from Mama Marigold, just a snappy like, Do not make such a fool of yourself, darling. This was bound to happen eventually. You understood that you brought people that did not belong here. And you just hear a very distressed Gilligan return like, You're saying that you took them up to the roof and they are dead, and you're telling me to calm down? You're gonna have to explain what happened to me, man. And you hear a slapping sound. Is everything okay in there? You guys go down just far enough to see Hadwin and Radley both holding back Gilligan, who's still in his human guise as he's trying to push past Mama Marigold a bit farther up the stairs, within reach to strike him. Uh, he has a very large red mark on the side of his face and a very violent look in his eyes, looking towards uh, Mama Marigold. As this happens, he looks to Hadwin and Radley. You two came here with us, and you're all right with this? You're siding with her after that happened? Those two were with us! We were supposed to be here together, we were a family! And you're gonna side with her just because it got inconvenient and they acted out? He like looks up to the lot of you, just peeking down from the stairwell. I don't know what they did, and I'm willing to hear you out, but you heard ours. They tried to feed us to a, to a demon. They, they were, were trying weird. to give us up to Lilith. Ever since they heard that name, they were acting strange. And then they tried to take over both motions over toward both them, uh, both, uh, the, the girls, and just, like, have, like, a very much, like, I'm not gonna speak for them look on his face. Marley, you tell me what happened. It is like how they said. They tried to take advantage, well, they took full advantage of myself and Fionula. They wanted to sacrifice everything to La Senora Lilith, and they were willing to kill everybody here. That probably meant including you. You see his brow furls for a moment, and then his eyes tightly close and then reopen. We have been behaving ourselves for hundreds of years. It would have taken something monumental to make them act out that way. Then, I... La Senorita Lilith is more monumental than even you think. His lower lip curls up. You see his expression soften into something a lot more morose as he pushes back suddenly from Hadwin and Radley. You need to leave. That is what I was planning to do, Gilligan. I'm gonna need some time to sort out exactly what this is. I can't imagine those girls ever going rogue. A lot of you need to figure out what you need and then go after Inanna. We can talk about this after this crisis ends. Marile. Yes, sir. If need be, I will accept any punishment. You see, Marigold kind of flicks her cigarette up towards you. That is not necessary. If anyone is going to accept punishment for the behavior of the girls, then it will be me. And I would like to see you try, Killigan. <sighs> he turns, and he walks back down the stairwell, disappearing from sight. Do you think he'll well, be okay? After everything that happened last night, I believe okay is a long shot for a lot of us. Come on. Sure, I'll be right. fine. Get out of here, then. Sure. Yep. Thank you for giving us a bit out of the cold, Mama Marigold. It was the least that we could do, and Odie has made a mess of the place. I suppose this was bound to happen sooner or later. With the world, with the city, and the state it is in. 
I suppose it was only a matter of time before the demons reverted back to how they were originally. No uh, offense intended, Marile. No offense taken, Mummy. Uh, besides, I'm only half. Hmm. I will straighten things out here. You go deal with what you have to do outside. Hopefully, if I am allowed to return, it is under better circumstances. She flicks a bit of ash off her cigarette and she walks past Hadwin and Radley, who both turn towards a lot of you. Again, they're very large, suited, sunglassed uh, appearances. Not giving out much emotion, but as they do, you see, uh, as they look up towards where the battle just happened, you see both of their bottom lips, like, curl slightly. Their heads tilt down, their fists tighten, and then they regain their composure, turn, and follow uh, Marigold. Well, let's get going. The car's not going to heat itself up. He's going to walk out. Okay. Niccolo. Niccolo. Mm -hmm. And I, like, tug him, like, to the back of the group. Look after Marile, okay? I think she's... She seems sad. So maybe be extra nice to her? She doesn't just seem sad, she is. It's, uh... These people are... As long as we've been here, I think she was hoping as close as family. Even if yeah. sometimes they butted heads a bit. Makes Don't... me sad to see her like that, so look after her, yeah? And, uh, don't take what Mama Marigold said too much to heart, alright? About demons going back to how they were? Mm. I wouldn't worry about that with me, I don't really... I don't even know what I was doing before I came here, so... I don't think there's any worry about that. I was more meaning that she's, uh... Hardly right in any sense of the word, so honestly, taking her word at any in any point would be would be very very much a bad idea. I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't trust it in the slightest. <laughs> he will uh, nod to Fiona, like give a uh, look over toward uh, Marile, and then just just sort of start making his way to back to the front because he's like, I'm gonna get one more coffee before I fucking leave. Put a bit of I put a bit of whiskey in my in my in my coffee. Ooh, can I try a sip? Oh, I thought you go liked the black garden. Plan to try a sip of the whiskey coffee. Oh, yo, can I have some? No! <laughs> it, it's just a best friend's coffee. Mm hmm. I'm not your guys' right. best friend? <laughs> He's like, you my can have best some with Gino. Friend. Yeah, you can have some with Gino. Emmanuel, you want to try one of mine? <laughs> yup, I'm gonna have best friend coffee without you. This oh, sucks. You just... Here you go, best friend. That's real, that's real, that's real gross. I'm gonna be honest. It's an acquired taste. Yours You'll learn like to love it. Spicy. <laughs> Why would I want to learn to love a thing? Why would I have a thing that tastes bad? And be like, maybe if I have more of it, I'll like it. It's an acquired taste. Sounds stupid. That's, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stupid. Why acquire a taste? What about the things that already taste good? Like pizza. Walk over oh. toward, uh, walk over toward, uh, and just, just sort of like offer, offer like the coffee, like over to, uh, just kind of like looking over like, hmm. What's in this coffee? Nothing. <laughs> Bitterness. Not a damn thing. <laughs> she just according looks. To, according looks to at... Emmanuel, it's uh, best friend coffee. <laughs> you know I like a lot of cream and vanilla in my coffee, right? Didn't think you felt too sweet right now. <laughs> Probably not. Pues, mejor que nada. Takes a sip. <laughs> mejor que nada. It's cold. Arden, maybe you should have given her some of your alcohol coffee. Maybe. Hey, Marile, you want some alcohol? Oh, so they get coffee and I, I don't? Is that, Am I just the only person not in the best friend club? If I have any yeah. more coffee, I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. I don't think anybody here wants that. That's straight up whiskey if you want that. I am fine without the whiskey. I am more of a vodka kind of girl. You're lost. Don't worry, Manny, I can't have coffee either. Uh, while moving down, you all climb down the uh, raised cliff face, the minor cliff face, that when you get there, you notice the... Distortion in the earth that caused it to like crack up and make that cliff face appears to have shifted some more and it's now larger as if the entire chunk of oh. land of city you were just on had during uh, the time you were there had shifted slightly. You guys get back down, you get to the van, which as you get uh, close to it, you notice that it seems to be covered in a relatively fresh layer of ice. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna try to get this thing moving again. Uh, as you go to try to drive it. Uh, could you go ahead and, for me, roll, let's say, roll me a survival check. You get in, you try to turn it on, it, <laughs> yeah. it sputters for a minute, and you just smash the front of the, uh, uh, the front panel of the vehicle, and it sputters to life when you do. 
We we wait for however long the the car needs to warm up and defrost. How much itself. gas does this car have, by the way? <laughs> what a good question. <laughs> Previously, we said we weren't going to worry about it, and therefore Logan wouldn't worry about it. But if we brought it up, mm-hmm. Logan would worry Weirdly, about it. That's true. I did warn against Birds bringing were... it up to me. I do remember. So this. here's what we're going to do now that it's been brought up. No, <laughs> good job. No! Good job, Cody. We're going to say. I'm here for car stuff. We are, we are going to say uh, that uh, we're just going to go ahead and um, say that every square of the map requires a quarter of a tank of gas. And I, and I am going to roll a d4 to determine how many it had to begin with. Yeah. Cody! Okay, so it appears to have about a quarter of a tank left. Like, As a man with a car, do I know Do I know where the gas stations of this place? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. You would yeah. know that there was it's probably there's probably <laughs> no there's probably one within like every square I'd say and you're in a city after all. Um, I would say that you would know the general approximate direction where one would have been before the city got jigsaw puzzled. I think we're gonna go and try to find a station before we make our way forward. Okay, as you guys move around, as you drive around the city, uh, it takes you all of 10, 12 minutes. Uh, as you drive around, heading in the direction that you believe the gas station uh, was, Niccolo. As you guys do, you're all instructed to uh, look around and try to make sure the area is safe. As you guys are heading down, as I've described before, this part of the city is kind of on a slope, heading down from the mountain down to the bay. Theo, you in particular, as everybody else is looking towards the streets and whatnot around them, you briefly get a relatively clear view of the bay. It's still obscured by the blizzard, but you do see it, and you briefly catch a glimpse. It's hard to make out details, but... A absolutely colossal, gargantuan creature you see moving in the bay. You don't see the whole the whole thing, but you see what looks like the massive form of some serpentine creature. It looks like a very large lizard. And when I'm talking scale, I mean on a on a rather Godzilla-esque scale. Oh. This oh. thing moving, coming up. You see fins and what look like what looks like mechanical plating on a massive serpentine creature coming up from the bay and then dipping back down. You see as it does, it cracks through ice and breaks it apart around it. Various lights and whatnot are the only reason you can see it through the blizzard as you see all sorts of what looks like spotlights and uh, mechanical bits that look both demonic and industrial that are like lining it. It's clear whatever this is, it is a massive machine of some kind, but it has the form of a demon. Just moves up and then down in the water and vanishes. You catch a, a brief glimpse of that. The, uh, as you do and as the others are looking, you guys do manage to locate a gas station. But yeah, Fio, you're the only one that manages to catch a view of that thing moving in the bay. Oh, well, all right then. What is it? There was, there was like a big, big like serpent creature out in the bay and I, it, it looked like it might have been like a machine or something. But it, it was just oh. swimming around, swimming around in the bay. And I don't know if it's hostile, but most things are. So so maybe we just don't go near the water as much as we can, yeah. maybe? It's a good thing we have no plans to go into the water at any point in time. No plans whatsoever. We have no, like, why are you guys saying it like that? We have no, we have no plans Could whatsoever to do that. possibly lead us there. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Uh, I agree. We, we don't. <laughs> as you guys say this, uh, almost as if to indicate that it had been seen in some way, the massive chain that fired out of the spire after you guys had settled it in this world, the massive colossal chain that fired off into the water, uh, you hear this reverberating, massive twanging sound like a wire being struck, like metal wire being struck, reverberating, and you see the chain that goes from the top of the spire shooting out into the bay and down into the water. It shifts and seems to get pulled and plucked, seemingly by the movement of this thing in the bay, and the sound can be heard, even though you are quite far away. You're about half the city away from it at this point. Well, not half, but you're quite far away. You can almost feel the vibrations in the air caused by it as this thing moves what must be thousands of tons worth of metal just by striking up against it. Oh, no. No plans whatsoever to go into that water. Is it trying to like? Pull is it, it out weird that I want to go in the water more now? Yes. Yes. On the road, eyes on the road, eyes on the road. Don't listen to them, eyes on the road, eyes on the road. 
You guys find your way up to and pull up to the gas station, which looks to be relatively intact. Lucky you. Hey! All right. Does anyone know how to siphon gas? If there's any way to do that, then we'll do it. If not, then we'll figure out <coughs> what to do after that. Is the, are, the, are the pumps on, Logan? Uh, there is no power to this place. Okay. And to my rudimentary so. understanding of gas pumps, they are not working. <laughs> As you go in, uh, you see that inside, though the lights are off, there is a very faint bluish glow coming from inside. You notice the shifts in the area have caused many shelves to have fallen over and crashed, um, and they're almost like piled up inside. But you see underneath them, there is this golden bluish hue that is glowing lightly and is peeking out from the products that are piled on top of it. Oh. I investigate further. As you guys move over to it, you see that it is, in fact, uh, several shelves and whatnot have fallen on and made a, a pile that is well over your heads surrounding whatever is causes the source of this glow. What would you like to do? Oh, move! Move the stuff. Uh, Gino, you pull one of the shelves and pull it off. As you do, it causes a chain reaction where all of the shelves begin falling all at once off of it. The things that have been stacked on top of it seem to give way like a rude Goldberg machine and just fall and scatter across the floor, revealing the statue of a woman holding an hourglass above their head. As you guys see, another statue of the oh, goddess. Fuck. The light glow oh, fills nice. the area. A slight warmth comes with it and fills it. You are once again given the knowledge that you could use this to turn the essence of demons you've gathered into various items. In case any of you are interested while you're here, you notice when you do that the prices are slightly lower than they were before. I'm gonna run up and be like, and I'm uh, I'm gonna steal all this vital star essence. <laughs> yeah! You rush up, and Emmanuel, go ahead and do that. You guys notice when you go there, there's an item that is there that was not previously available. You guys see that um, one of the things you become aware is purchasable is a golden orb. A small humanoid head-shaped golden crystal that, like the others, looks like it could fit in the palm of your hand. Inside there's a light glow that looks to shift between this blackish hue, but is mostly this uh, golden, bright white, pure light. If you are holding one of these, and you are killed by damage or an effect, and just for the sake of Anna, killed being fails three death saves or an equivalent, not being reduced to zero hit points, like being killed, there's a 50% chance that you will not die and instead regain half your maximum hit points. And when that happens, you would also be cleansed of negative effects that could be removed by the spell Greater Restoration. All You could also use it as an action, uh, crushing it in your hand to target a creature that is a dead creature and that has been dead for no more than one minute and restore it to life. They would gain, uh, heckin, they would regain half their hit points as per the other effect. It's basically an off revivify as an orb that if you die has a chance to auto trigger. You guys, if you want to pull together to buy it, you can. Otherwise, just be aware that that is a thing that exists, and it costs 5,000 red orbs. What would you guys like to do about the gas situation? Um, we we look around to see if they have I any would, canisters. I, I would guess. basically uh, look around to see if there's any way to uh, turn on the power, see if there's any backup generator or anything. Okay, so if you're looking for backup power, I'd like you to roll investigation. I'd like basically anyone looking for stuff to roll me investigation. Hey, hey, right, Arden, you want to make an investigation check there, buddy? Boy, do I. Arden, as you look around, you do manage to find, along with Gino, uh, well, kind of along with Gino, he's in proximity. <laughs> you man me. You <laughs> manage to find some of your traditional Left 4 Dead style canisters of gas. However, as you look at them, mm -hmm. they appear to be empty. That said, Nicolo, as you search around, you do manage to find a backup power generator for the station that appears to have failed to go off. You notice that uh, the backup power supply to the station, some of the wires appear to have been broken and disconnected, but it looks like you might be able to fix it. Hey, give me a minute. I gotta fix this down here. You need any help down there? He just like looks at uh, looks at what's in front of him, looks back up. You have a flashlight? <laughs> I have a fire. Yeah, sit. <laughs> Yeah, send Mario Light down with the flashlight. I don't want fire in the gas station. That's fair. Wait, Mama we Marigold called me a Spitfire. Does that mean I shouldn't be here? No. Oh fuck! That's is this place gonna blow up? As you, as they yes. talk, Marile again uh, uses her flashlight to illuminate the area where you're working. <laughs> as you try to reconnect the proper wires, and as outside you guys are discussing the place exploding, and Gino briefly muses about if the place is going to detonate, the power suddenly comes to life, the lights flicker, and there's a, a small shudder from the building. Just as you finish, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see you guys found canisters. Good. We can we can try to get some excess. Alright, let's try and uh, fill these up then. 
I'm going to see how much gas this place had to offer and how much you guys can get out because the system is damaged. All right. Nice. A tank and a half's worth of gas. Are we are we about finished with the inside here? It's important. Looks like it. Okay, I'll you be right back. Blow the, you want to blow Where this place going? up and walk away? No. -uh. <laughs> I'm more clever um, than that, stupid. What are you doing? What are you going to do there, Chad? I'm going to move the car away from the gas for a while inside. <laughs> I'm gonna move the car away from the gas pump. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Come back out with a length of chain and several cans of spray paint. He does this. <laughs> All right. I want to see where this is going. Begin to padlock the door shut. <laughs> and then just start spray painting on all over the windows, just saying, like, dead inside. <laughs> what, what? What? What are you doing? Let, yeah. him, let him express himself, mi amor. He's a little Banksy. So, I would say, have you seen a movie? But this is several movies. So, have you seen a zombie movie ever? <laughs> I've never seen no. a movie in my life. Okay, we have work to do there. Um... I'm gonna finish this, uh, but yeah, this is a thing that happens like kind of a lot to the point that I, I felt the urge. This is awesome. <laughs> Someone's gonna pass by here and be like, ah. We'll say that <laughs> with the search, the buying, the fixing, we'll say that it is now 3 p.m. and you now have gas. Well, you're still in the same square. Yeah! Time to freaking head out. Let's go fuck up a bull. As you move out and you head up the mountain, you follow the path. Uh, which has a lot of stay out signs, warning signs, which you have to just callously ignore. You do see as you move up the mountain, the path that the van can follow does come to an end as the uh, the area that the construction went up as far as sort of comes to a stop and you hit a forested uh, section that heads up to the actual mountain itself. The top of the mountain is almost invisible due to the blizzard that's going on. It's uh, very difficult to see the top of it. You also notice by this point, as you get out to the point you're at, that off in the distance, in the space between the mountains that leads out of the APOM capital city area, there appears to be almost a wall of the blizzard where it's thicker that seems to surround the area. Oh. You presume this is likely the work of the living blizzard trying to set up a perimeter. Gino, <laughs> Marile, Theo, and Emmanuel. You guys all see what look like flickers of what look like flame uh, darting across part of the mountain, uh, and you're able to keep your eyes on it closely enough that you can tell exactly where it's going. Um, you can't make out exactly what it is from where you are due to the blizzard, but the light red warm glow from within the blizzard is trackable, and you just kind of watch it move along the mountain and see it disappear on a certain plateau. Uh, you do see it, Arden, but you kind of lose track of it. The others manage to be able to pinpoint, like, it disappeared there within, like, maybe 15-20 minutes of travel. We will find oh, a nice oh. place to stow the van. <laughs> right. Have any idea what we should be looking for, anyone? Uh, down that path. Yeah, yeah just over there. Rubbing my eyes, still going out. <laughs> you need someone to hold your hand to guide you, Nicolo? I'm not that old. I didn't call you. I was just saying I could guide you. It's okay, Fio. You can hold my hand. Okay. Perfect. I'll take his hand. Hooray. <laughs> As you guys continue to move along, you get within range. You see the warm glow of the flames that were ducking into this large cave, which is definitely has a wide enough mouth to it that you could absolutely believe that Inanna would go into there, given what you saw before, even though the creature is massive. <laughs> you didn't see it leave, but the glow of the fire seems to have gone far enough in that it is no longer visible from the outside by the time you reach the mouth of the cave. I want to light my glaive on fire with my crimson right give us at least a little protection from the cold or even just a, as a light source <laughs> where's my hurt dice ah, ow oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> you were doing so well too a little bit numb to pain because of the cold you dig into your arm more than you mean to <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you do it you light your glaive on fire you all feel a bit of warmth coming from it once he's ignited it Nice job. Ah. Oh, what? <laughs> you should like being in the doghouse. I'll take some of the like black wrappings that are like around my belt and I'll like wrap them around Arden so I'm where he fucking hurt himself. Stupid. Should... Sorry. You're fine. Yeah. Didn't hurt as much as I used to, at least. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> Are you holding his hand and guiding him with Jesus? <laughs> uh, I let 
I'd let myself be guided. As you guys emerge into the cave, uh, you can kind of tell whenever you enter into it. Um, it's not all that deep. The wind, sound of the wind whistling through it doesn't come with any major resonance. You don't feel the wind passing too strongly into it, giving you the vibe that it's probably relatively shallow. The mouth of the cave is about 25 feet across, and at its narrowest is what you can see from the outside. It comes down to being about 15 feet-ish wide at its uh, tightest point. The cave appears to have been mined out. You see the various uh, spots where it looks like minerals and chunks of ore have been taken out of the walls. As well as the occasional glitter caught by the, um, what seems to be remaining tiny little fragments of cobalt in the, in the walls that catch the light of the flame from your glaive as you pass by. As you do, you see the pathway splits off into two different paths, both of which are fairly dark. There's no immediate light source. And you see there are two chambers, one going up that appears to be larger, uh, one going down to the south that appears to be a, a dead end. I would like another perception check from everybody here. So, Marile, you're the one that would notice it, given that you got the highest. As you move forward, you see in the northern chamber, there appears to be a very large pile of what look like frozen corpses that look like human remains. There's various little uh, glints of different kinds of currency, small objects, some frozen meat, some bodies that have been reduced to frozen bones, but okay. you're the first person to catch this pile of corpses that appears to have been dragged here and partially consumed. You see there's some, from where you are, you can tell there's some uh, marks on the fleshy bits that look like they've been gnawed on, and where they've been gnawed on, you see that there's like ashes and an ember-like texture around those chunks. I'll also note the size of the bite marks does not match the colossal size of the bull that you guys had seen before. Okay, well, whatever caused all that, it definitely was not the bull. What? Uh, well, over there, points to the pile of bones. Do you see all those teeth and claw marks? Oh, yeah. yeah. Last I checked, um, el toro no come carne. Mm, I think hellhounds made these. I made these kinds of marks. Just great. I don't know, this kind of feels like a giant enemy crab kind of place. I was also thinking that, but... Well, keep your no, eyes the, up the for both, just don't I line up. They're very similar, these <laughs> giant crabs and hellhounds. Well, they're from the frost hills, and they breathe fire, so we might get a little toasty. Uh -huh. This is where the light was was going, no? Yeah. Yeah. Spread out, look around. If we have to back away, we have to back away. Nicolo, as you say that, you turn back towards the entrance. You hear the snapping of a bone in the cave, and as you turn, you see a massive black dog standing, its paw crushing a bone that was left in its path, He's looking so towards funny. you. As you see a creature that stands not qu much larger than any dog you've seen, resembling this black fur, uh, some of it streaked back into a mane with most of its body being covered in this um, obsidian-covered, chalky-looking flesh. You can see flames licking out from its open mouth, which is growling this infernal, multi-layered growl at you as it slowly approaches. I'd like to change the Beastmaster and tame him. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you see. You see its throat and stomach have the glow of a fire inside of it, emerging from it as if there's a flaming core inside. As this happens, and as you take it in, you hear the snapping of bones, everybody else, as you see another one slowly stepping over the pile from behind it, climbing up on top of it to get about 10 feet above you. The sound of both of these creatures growling at you as they rear back. One of them begins That's furiously up. barking at you, and I'd like you all to roll initiative. Adile, you get to go first. Ah, uh, there is the pupper. There is your pupper. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, I guess I can just, like, vicious mock it. Call it a bad yeah, dog. So anyway, Call it a bad that. dog. Bad boy. Hey, hey, bad. I'm not gonna, gonna say that. I'm just gonna say it's so fucking ugly, it's not winning any dog shows anytime soon. <laughs> I wouldn't say something so cruel as to call it a bad boy. <laughs> something so cruel and untrue. Yeah. We're gonna do we're gonna do vicious mockery. I'm gonna target the one that is not in the pile of bones. Gotcha. Heck yeah. Uh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tar target the one that's effectively behind us. It succeeds! No! No! He knows, he knows, he knows he's beautiful. Oh, it's true. 
Yeah, he's a very high opinion of himself. <laughs> he thinks winter is a concept too. I respect that. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate you so much. Like, well, with that in mind, there's my turn as I give Theo Bardic inspiration. <laughs> Okay, hey, Theo, like what you yeah. see? Theo, you're up. Arden, you're on deck. <laughs> okay. Cool. I'm gonna get over here. Okay. It is 10 feet up because it is on top of the pile that's in front of you. I'm going to get close enough to map it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to spend a point of grit. And I'm going to also spend a style point, And I'm going to map them. Alrighty. Make sure to take off your style point to make it apply. Then get them. <laughs> You do hit, make sure you apply Grit's effect before you attack. Oh, nice. Damn. All right, you go up to it, you bring out your weapon, you tense up for a second and call up demonic strength you previously hadn't expressed. You strike it. As you do, some chunks of the corpses around you are sent scattering through the air as you cut the Hellhound. A small gout of flame emerges from the wound, and it doesn't hurt you, but it just, uh, where it's, it should be blood, you just see flame get released. You deal 22 damage to it. Nice to see puppies from back home. Too bad I'm the spicy one. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on deck, Emmanuel, but Hellhound 2 is going to be going first. Oh, shit. Uh, Hellhound 2 is going to look at the setup you guys have, and they are going to... Yeah, they're going to look at you guys, and they're going to rush past you a bit. Uh, they leave your range, Theo. No. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Woo. Nice. You go for an attack, you don't have the 12 damage to it. It looks very hurt as you strike it. It lets out another whimper. It gets down as it whimpers. You see it looks like it begins choking on something as you fla see flames beginning to build up in its mouth. And it is going to breathe a cone of flame that's going to hit Nicolo, Marile, and Gino. It breathes a wave of fire that emerges. You guys all have to make dexterity saves. I've just rolled them yes. against you. Uh, actually, I hold on. Actually, actually heckin, I take that back. Nicolo, you are... Let's see, one, two, three. Nicolo, you are just out of range. Sorry about that. Hooray! What, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I failed. <laughs> I was going to uh, uh, I, gonna, I wanna use uh, Unmovable Object from Talimonia. So, let's go ahead, and as you do that, let's... Throw resistance to fire on you. Done. You bring up Talimonia. Talimonia takes on this reddish hue as the edges of it, as it appears in front of you, begin to uh, begin to almost like ember, and you see little cinders coming off of it. So you gain that. Take off all three of your style points as you do so, yep. and I'm going to roll the damage against Marile and against Gino. Gino, you take... <laughs> you take zero because you resist it down low enough the Talimonia's damage threshold just negates it. So you put it up and as it burns through it, the fire just goes around you. You hold your hand out, the shield appearing in front of you, and it does nothing. Marile, you, you manage to dodge most of it, but you take ten fire damage. You know, I wanted to say a thing about, like, don't move. They can't see you if they don't move. Oh, so let's but, put you on this. but we, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of past that. Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Pilot. What are you casting? Uh, inflict wounds. All right, get it. But, uh, that nice. is. Put your hand out. Use a spell okay. slot. You hit it. It takes fourteen damage as a uh, just necrotic energy wreaths across its body. You see a couple bits of the flame seem to flicker out as if it suppresses the flame inside of it for a moment, but then it reignites. You do full damage. Mm, looking spell. Yeah, second one. That one misses. Mm, seeking spell. <laughs> Try that again. Yeah. That one hits. That's better. Nice. I get a style point and. <laughs> yeah. And you do oh, 18 nice. damage to it. Uh, I'm gonna go back here. Have fun. The hellhound is going to go. Go eat me. <laughs> it rushes to forward towards you as it does. It's going He's to. He's in a rock. <laughs> it, it gets there uh, close enough. It is going to he breathe fire it. on the two of you. It reaches up, unleashes a blast of fire that flashes out behind you. Nicolo is currently. Nicolo and Fio are the only ones that have not been hit by fire now. You both will take half. Oh, these, dogs, these dogs like me. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> you get blasted by flame. You both take six damage total as the flames uh, lick across you, but you both kind of duck to the wall, <sighs> and most of it passes by you. It's then going to move around you and get to about here. You said this one, this one in front of me is looking pretty rough, right? Yep. Theo did quite uh, a bit to it. <laughs> okay. I will summon my echo. It peels away from you, appearing like a ghost. 
and uh, I'm gonna I'm a heckin' bap him. Haba! Ho ho! Bam bam bam! That's a crit for you. Get him! Oh yeah, it's an improved crit. What right? The fuck! <laughs> All right, you strike it, oh. dealing 26 damage to it. It is not down, but it is hurt. Fuck it. I'll go uh, Unleash Incarnation. Take another. Hiya! That's a miss. Well, unfortunate. So, okay, now action search. <laughs> I, I've decided you will die now. Die. That's it. Okay, cool. Hooray! Now one dies, it rears up and jumps at you. As it leaps at you, you bring up your blade. The echo comes in and, like, strikes it with its shoulder for a sec to stop it in the air. And you bring up your, uh, what are you using? Halberd? Or... Greatsword. Yeah, greatsword. Greatsword slice it, sending it hurtling across the room. It hits the wall and falls down with its body beginning to dissolve, uh, to dissolve away. Uh, because it's free, I'll heck and move my echo to get over, uh, next to the hellhound. Right below Marilei. I'm going to uh, use an amplified version of my uh, my blood curse of the marked on this on the second hellhound boy here. Alrighty. So I'm gonna take a D4 damage. You take four again. (laughs) 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 Ah, Damn it! (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) I mean everything's fine. Okay, well. I, yeah. Oh! Well, I'll take that. All right. <laughs> Should have been oh. but whatever. <laughs> you deal 27 I damage. It? I didn't Re- kill it. <laughs> nope. Reduce down to 20 because the fire damage. Second. Well, uh, bonus action. Smack him with it with the back end. Bonk. That's a hit. Bonk. Now it's dead. How yeah. do you want to do this? Nice. Uh, a big bonk. Uh, it's a pretty big bonk. <laughs> I will thrust my, my glaive forward, just stabbing it through its mouth, and then drive it back out, and then uh, with the back end, just slash it across its face. It falls to the ground, lets out a little whimper as you strike it aside. Uh, its body begins to dissolve. These two have been destroyed. <sighs> nice work! Ah, my hand! Yeah, are you? <laughs> you keep doing that. I don't okay. mean to make it hurt so fucking bad. So ah. when you push the the blade in, just do it a little bit. I guess. Mighty leg. Uh, as that you are the closest to it, you would notice at this point, uh, among the bodies that are in that pile, uh, there are several small objects that appear to be catching the light and glowing with a small amount of magical energy. Notably, among them, you cool. notice there's a few orbs that you recognize as being similar to the ones that you guys have uh, have already had. Oh. I think we can safely conclude that not all dogs go to heaven. As you guys look through it, you <laughs> see among the items that are here, uh, there are through there appears to be the body of um, a figure that uh, Nicolo. Hey, it's one of those things. Nicolo, you <laughs> notice it immediately, uh, and whenever you're looking through it. Though the uniform has changed somewhat since you last saw it, you recognize that one of the bodies that appears to have most of the magical items on it, the tattered remains of part of the uniform on it appears to be the white uh, uniform with the emblem of the Order of the Sword on it. Oh. Marile, when this is pointed out, you would recognize this as the same emblem that Niccolo wore whenever he first uh, he first met you. <laughs> they were this close, huh? Is this from where I where I think it is coming from, Nicola? Yeah. Which means that there's probably more. Well, there probably were at the very least before all of this. Do you think they were coming here because of what was going to happen or because they found us? Well, either way, it's not a very good uh not a very good thing. If they knew what was happening before it happened, then that's terrible, but if they knew we were here, that's even more terrible. By the way, it's good for us right now. Take everything. The Order of the Sword member appeared, the only thing remaining of them, uh, appears to be that they were wearing a very particular uh, cloak that, when you look at it, seems to be made from a very rich material that is lined with golden thread and has a, like, tail-like, um, a tail-like protrusion coming out the back of it. Looks like it can be worn as a mantle. Nicolo, for the purposes of uh, what you guys are doing. Um, we'll say that you take the five minutes necessary to uh, identify the item that you're holding. It is a cloak hey. of a manta ray. Oh. While wearing oh. this cloak with its hood up, you can breathe underwater, and you have a swimming speed of 60 feet. 
I'm, I'm looking at, I, I think, I think he, uh, I think the best person to have is he'd walk over toward, um, uh, toward, um, uh, Fionula and be like, Here, you want this? For that creature well, we saw earlier. In case you we have, have to, go to and take kill care it. Of him. <laughs> in case we have to, in case we have to go and take care of him, I think we need you at your best. Oh, well, what does this thing do? It will allow you to move at a very high speed underwater, as well as, as well as be able to breathe underwater. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty decent swimmer myself. I don't think I need it. Oh, we just came from the pool too. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if if you're sure, Nicolo, thank you. I think it would be rather nice. It's also a rather nice looking mantle. So. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just carefully give him a hug. He will accept hug, but he will, you know, just whatever. <laughs> thank you very much. It's really sweet of you. Appreciate that. I'll put it on. And I'll look, I'll look at Arden. What do you think? Oh, that's great. You look amazing. Oh my gosh. Might have to do something about the horns. It's Maybe. okay. Her face is even more cherry red than normal. Thank oh. you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. It's lovely. Oh, lovely. As I'm going like... to give him a hug. Yo. Just like oh, leans into <laughs> Marley. Go and ahead. Like, <laughs> I guess yeah. they're doing rather well. It is what they call young love. We were having huh. a bit of problems a couple of hours ago, but it seems like everything's going fine. <laughs> hmm. It seems that they've worked it out, which is always good. Can't have more than one one bickering couple here. It was entertaining, though. It was. <laughs> this is boring. If you guys are going to just hug in a cave, I'm going to go outside and play with my whiskey. I'm going to grab him manual and pull him into the hug with Arden. No, You're not no I hug. still hate you today. Oh, oh no, I love you. <laughs> 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 I'll get in here, you little, you little bastard. I use Misty Step. Honey! <laughs> I run out of the cave. I'll go after him, you two keep oh, hugging or whatever. I wasn't mean to him, was I? No. He's no, a he's kid, a it's alright. Okay, <laughs> let's go. As you guys rush out of the cave, following Emmanuel and get outside, <clears throat> Your eyes are all drawn pretty immediately up the continued side of the uh, of the mountain. You see that on a plateau, a few hundred feet up from where you are, you see the form of a very large bull standing, looking down at you, only silhouetted against the blizzard because of the flames it's emitting from its body, as if waiting for you to have come out, but too far away for you guys to directly affect it from where you are, unless anybody wants to prove me wrong on that. You see the form of the large demonic bull reel back. It raises up its head and lets out this powerful uh, bull-like roar that causes the mountain to shake. As it does, there's barely any time for you guys to recognize it. Staying where it is, but kind of peeling back and moving back towards what you can see to be a carved out plateau around that part of the mountain. But as the mountain shakes, you see that a, a mining area that was a bit farther up seems to begin to distort as snow that is built up breaks free and an avalanche comes crashing towards the lot of you. The bull watches as uh -oh. this happens. You see it conjuring flaming blades in the air like it did before, that as this avalanche pours down the mountain, pulling vehicles and mining equipment, trees uprooted with it as it comes at you, the bull fires flaming blades down at you that inter uh, move with it. I want to know, skill challenge time, what would you guys like to do to deal with the avalanche as well as debris that is hurtling towards you? Uh, really quick, uh, as we go through this, I'm gonna roll for each of you because you're each gonna have an individual problem to deal with. Nicolo, <laughs> you're the problem you have to deal with. As you look at it, you hear this strange honking noise coming from the snow. As suddenly uprooted from it, you see uh, what looks to be a transport truck get hurled up and thrown over specifically towards you. Flying uh, through the air, how would you like to deal with that? Uh, if it's flying through the air, I would like to... It, it snow's coming down, There's right? also like an coming... avalanche coming at you. You'll have to, you'll have to yeah, deal yeah, with yeah. that baseline. Okay. I would like to have him uh, rush forward as he sees <laughs> that happen, and then immediately just drop to drop down to, like, as low as he can, sliding on his knees underneath the truck as it goes over him. <laughs> Alrighty. So as you do that, I'd like you to roll me a dexterity check. Oh no. As you do, you try to soar under it. As it does, the back end of it tips, strikes the ground, and you see it hurtle towards you. You fail to dodge it in that way. You'll have another chance to try to avoid it, but that particular way has not succeeded. Marile, Ooh. 
the issue that you're going to have to deal with is Avalanche, and also, uh, as you see Niccolo try to slide under a truck which seems to contort and turn towards him as he sort of fails to, you hear the ripping of bark as you see a tree get uprooted, and as the Avalanche pulls it, it gets thrown forward and hurtles towards you like a spear. How would you like to deal with that? <laughs> and I long jump to the side. <laughs> Why? You want to jump out yeah. of the way of it? Roll me a dexterity check. Oof. No. Oh, and you're good at those, too. As you try to, it strikes close enough to you that it doesn't hit you, but it causes you to fall off balance slightly as the snow begins pouring in at you. Uh, all right. Then uh, you will have failed the first check, but you'll get a chance to roll against the overall damage. Arden, let's see what you're going to deal with. Watch out. As it hits, a huge chunk of frozen rock gets rooted up and also hurled into the air, streaming towards you. As it does, it rolls down, uh, the like just in front of the avalanche with you, and just as you feel like you have a handle on it, you see blades of flame come from Inanna, strike it, and this massive piece of rock oh. catches a flame, cracks, oh. and it breaks oh. open into shards that fly at you like a hail of icy arrows. What would you like to do? Could I... Think of a way out of this? Yeah? <laughs> Roll me an intelligence check, LP. Oh, wow, I didn't think that would work. I'm, I'm being nice to you, <laughs> is what's happening. I know. Here. Oh, why? <laughs> style points, or is this... Uh... You can put style points no. in if you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna brain blast my way out of this. <laughs> brain blast! <laughs> All right, Arden. You take... You look at where they're going. You calculate their trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> You observe. I want to just like stand in place because I know that none of them are gonna like, hit me. Look at like one just... step to the left. <laughs> you look at no, where they're all coming, and as they're all about to get to you, you take up your glaive, spin it in place, dramatically slice towards them, and then just move your shoulder back slightly. As they do, as you hold your weapon forward valiantly in a position <laughs> as if you're about to deflect, they fly by you, missing you each by an inch. As they strike in behind you, as the camera pans up, there is a cartoon like silhouette in the, the rocks that have pierced into the ground in the shape of Arden behind him. <laughs> yeah. What I'm just imagining too, because it's an intelligence check, it then zooms out of his head. He's like, yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> gain a style a point. Scene from like the Sherlock Holmes movie. Yeah. The Sherlock yeah. Holmes movie. Again, uh, gain a style point. Theo. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay, we already rolled that one. That one's been done. Watch all. Several minecarts nearby carrying chunks of cobalt get hit by the avalanches they're coming down, sending them careening into the air. Large chunks of gemstone, each of them, uh, the smallest ones being about the size of your head, the largest ones being about the size of your torso. A couple dozen of these soar through the air towards you. How would you like to deal with that? Okay, so could I potentially... So there's two layers to my idea here. I would like to try to penguin like fall on my belly and penguin slide away from them and get out of the way while doing so try to bat them away with mage hand <laughs> you'll have to commit to which one of those ideas you want to roll for i'd say one's yeah. one's a dexterity check and the other would be a charisma check i will dex my way out of this but roll I me a dexterity know. check as you Finally. leap and with the the now the cape you now have on like fluttering behind you making you look particularly smooth and aerodynamic you like go to an incline you leap forward stomach out roll the check adding style points into this. okay Come on. Hiya. and as you soar out majestically arms out you hit the snow on the bank you intend to slide down, and it turns out to be deeper than you thought, and you just go into the snow, <laughs> leaving like a- Like a fucking chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was one point oh. too low. Oh, oh no! I my little horns above the snow, and that's all you see. <laughs> <laughs> Gino. Let's see what you're dealing with. <laughs> so the deal, the issue you have to deal with is a large, uh, you are at the forefront of it, the snow, the avalanche is closest to you. How do you want to deal with just being a, uh, the snow possibly swallowing you up? This is going to bury me. Because my initial thing was like, I want to try to use Telemonia to like make a barrier or something and just like have it kind of go around. But like... Yeah, you could, that's you could try that. You could make like code that as something if you want to. Okay, I'll, then I'll try that. Roll me a constitution check. 
You put your hand up, you conjure up Talamonia, the mouth on it opens, and as the snow hits you, it begins to part around you, but it slowly begins to push back with too much force against it, and I'm afraid you are one point short. It doesn't it doesn't manage to protect you as you feel the snow pushing you as you try to hold Talamonia up to block it. The last one. All right, child. Manny. <laughs> and Mer, as, as the avalanche is just about to hit and begins to uh, overtake all of you, several of the blades of flame that Inanna conjured pierce through it, and, and about six or seven of these large, long, uh, flame-like uh, blades are soaring towards you. How do you want to deal with that? I'm going to use Mold Earth to fling myself into the air. All right. Roll me your spellcasting ability, then. Okay. Nice. You use Mold Earth, you put your hand towards the ground and pull up as you do the Earth shudders and launches you above them as the blades strike into the Earth underneath you, destroying it as you just kind of soar up and over everything. Uh, gain and a... I would like to use my Ring of Wonder on the avalanche. <laughs> we'll get, alright, gain a style point, first of all. Okay. <laughs> and then, before I roll a saving throw against the people who did not succeed that, Go ahead and roll me for your ring's effect. We'll see how that changes this. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That's the second time this happened. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. ah! You put your ring out. And you imagine, as you use it, you are filled with a vision of the snow stopping before each of the people, like just freezing and tilting and going upwards. You have a brief vision of the snow becoming falling under your control as you put your hand out and direct just an open palm towards Inanna. For this brief second, there's an image of the avalanche contorting through the air like Kaenort's swarm of keyblades in Kingdom Hearts, soaring at it and hitting Inanna. And then you snap back to reality, just it zooms out with you just being like, ha, ah, the reality snap back to reality. Given that you are stunned, I am going to add you to the people this is rolling against. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa! Uh, oh. <laughs> just so you guys just hear a very brief, oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm gonna say that, that I'm not gonna have you stunned for the actual roll to account for the fact that you did succeed, but you are going back into it as a consequence of that. <laughs> oh, as you fall, I need to roll a uh, I need to roll a deck save against all of you guys. Nicolo succeeds. Hooray! Everyone else fails. We died together. <laughs> that one gang. Nice Nicolo, <laughs> the truck slams in front of you, and though it kind of traps you underneath it, but as a secondary effect of it, though it doesn't crush you, as the snow passes over, it creates a shield for you, and the snow does so not crush you. The rest of you... So what you're saying is, I slid under the truck like I intended to. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the rest of you, you take 10 damage each, as the oh. avalanche hits you, partially burying you. You see Inanna hey. up on the mountain, let out one more... <laughs> cry as it turns and it moves back, seemingly content with where it is. You see the, this vague outline of what looked to be a structure of, like, pillars up there, but as the fire of Inanna leaves, you sort of uh, lose sight of it. Arden, you're the one that catches all this because you're out of the avalanche. As this happens, you, fe you feel the rumbling of something moving up near the top of the avalanche, and you see what looks like a large part of an old structure come loose from where it was. This large stone wall and begins crashing like side over side down, falling in the oh, path of the fuck. avalanche. As it's just about to get just in front of you and you put your weapon up towards it, it slams in place, leans forward, and then comes to a stop. And you see on it, the mercurial blue face of the goddess appears with the cracked web pattern reaching out to it as this wall has one of the tests of the goddess sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> and if one more of you had failed, it would have been destroyed by all this. The rest of you are buried in snow. Uh, bam! I get Theo up out first. I'm gonna dig my way out from under the truck. Are you all, are you all, are all right? I think so. All in favor of killing the bull. Yes, please. I. I thought we were killing it in the first place. Yeah, that's well, all the people. That. The people. Yeah, are, I, 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 I want to kill it. The people down there are like, oh, it's our pet or whatever. We're just, we're, let's, let's kill it. <laughs> we're killing it. Fuck them. I mean, I mean we already it. made Gilligan really sad. Uh, I'm gonna like kill his dog too. Watch. Wait, were those his dogs? Do we kill Gillian's dogs? 
They started it, okay? He can fucking... I mean, until we told them what was going on, he, they thought he was dead. So yeah, so he's clearly not missing dead. it. All right, good. Let's, uh, we're all in favor then. Let's climb this mountain. All right. We reaffirmed what we were already going to do. Perfect. Yeah. I was all up for not killing the bull until it fucking threw a truck at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it meant to. I think the truck I, was just I think there. it 100% meant to. It's a bull. Do you expect it to think It properly? was watching us, and it, it sent fire at us, and it maybe waited it's... for us to come out of... It waited for us to come out of the cave, Maybe, buddy, like... maybe uh... it is scared. It's probably just seen the 1998 classic Mulan. <laughs> it was probably laughing at us in whatever demon bull language it has. It didn't go move. Right. I'm killing it. I'm, 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 that's end of the discussion, I'm killing it. <laughs> you guys take a brief uh, five minute rest, regain some of your abilities, refresh some of your health, the <laughs> glaive goes out, you guys are left with the avalanche having basically solidified a path, a rough path up the mountain, but a path up the mountain towards roughly where Inanna was, but also oh. having left you with a piece of wreckage that has the, again, the mercurial blue face of the tests of the goddess uh, hanging on the side of it. Alrighty then. Do we want to take the test before we go beat up a bull? I feel like this these things have usually helped us out. But Professor Arding, I did study. What? <laughs> what? I'm ready. I can take the test, yes. Well, all right. It's going with a schoolgirl thing. I never went to school, so... So? Who's, uh, who's going to touch it? Boop! As Fio goes up to it, you put your fingers on it, they depress slightly into the face again, and you hear the familiar voice in your head, uh, all of you hearing, For the right to true strength, simply defeat thy enemy. What walks before you shall be unslayable, unless you look beyond and crush their uprooted foundation. Within these trials, that which cannot be restored does not exist. And as that happens, you feel the... Uh, gold orbs, devil, uh, devil um, stars, and whatnot all vanish from you as as you press your hand farther into it. Uh, it vanishes. A straw. The snow that's around you seems to suddenly burst upward, forming walls of snow that begin to spin. They collapse inward, causing you to be unable to see even directly in front of you. Feel the wall you're touching seems to disappear as the snow surrounds you, and then as it's totally whited out everything around you, it pulls back. And the snow forms a radius of about 40 <laughs> feet-ish. Uh, so like an 80-foot around sphere where this snowstorm begins to swirl as you're pulled into the realm that this test takes. The snow on the ground below you all takes on the appearance of this large, almost eye where uh, that seems to open. There's a light glow coming from the center of it. And you see surrounding you, there, there's these six relatively large stone stands that look like they're made of a combination of ice and rock and have carvings and runes in them. On top of each one, there's a large spike of ice that has a humanoid figure inside of them, and the cracks begin to form in these large ice spikes as whatever's inside begins to force its way out. And before we roll initiative, I would like everybody, on this map here, you may oh. place yourself anywhere within the eye. You see the figures that are inside these large ice spikes break out and these medium humanoid creatures that have skin that is peeled tight against their bones. They have ice covering chunks of their arm and they have a cl a clothing on that looks like it was meant to survive the cold but clearly did a poor job. They're in tatters. They have this almost skeletal face that has a jaw hanging wide open and each of them carries a long bone-like staff that as they break out you see ice build on and takes the form of a large scythe blade of ice that uh, erupts from one end and a large blade of ice erupts from the other. What Those of you familiar with demons would immediately know that this looks like a variant of a very specific kind of demon called Hells. Uh, Hells demons are ones that are considered the jailers of the demon world. They're rank and file demons that are meant to torment humans. They're the jailers of the underworld. These ones look like they're likely from the Frost Hells. They have certain adaptations on their bodies that help them to uh, survive in the cold or succumb to it based on their withered appearance. But you would know that these are some of the more dangerous and numerous demons, but not, um, they're not of critical power. They're almost always foot soldiers. One each comes from each of these uh, stone daises that they step out from. You see the stone daises glow briefly <coughs> as they jump off of them, and each one steps down. They all let out a combined wispy breath that seems to circle around you. Just a, a very haunting... <laughs> 
that seems to circle around you as if it's all in one voice. And one of them gets to go first! This one leaps towards you, they all seem to uh, move in unison. One rushes forward and is going to go straight for you, Fio. Yeah! As it does, it leaps at you, brings up its freezing scythe. Uh, it is going to make two attacks against you. Brings it down on you, it misses the first one. As it strikes down, it cuts into the ground just in front of you. As it, as you dodge the first one, it brings the other end of the scythe around, tries to strike you with the blade. That one also misses as you duck away from it. Arden, you're up. Nicolo, you're on deck. Uh, I'm gonna wander on over, <laughs> mosey on over here. I'll try and whack the fucking icy parts of it, I guess. Alrighty, as you rush towards it, um, for the sake of what you're doing, go ahead and roll me an attack roll. As you do that, you rush forward, you strike <laughs> towards it, uh, your glaive, which is not doing fire damage right now, presumably. As you hit it, uh, you do see the one that was directly in front of it, <clears throat> like, sort of, uh, acts as if they were hit as you strike the side of it. You don't manage to chip it, but it reacted to being hit. However, uh, you don't see any physical indication of how much damage it did to it overall, apart from the fact mm -hmm. that it did react to it. Bonus action, I'm just gonna fucking whack it with my ta the tail end of my full arm. Alrighty, go for it. You strike it, that's a hit, go ahead and roll damage. You hit it, you strike the side of it again. Uh, again, you don't seem to do any actual damage to the dais itself, but the creature beside it acts as if it got punched in the side of the head. Its head contorts to the side with a sickening crack. It puts its palm against one side of its head and then cracks it back into place. Hitting their parlor seems to be working! What's it on? Uh, I'm gonna back up here. Just in case. <laughs> As you do, that hells is gonna attack you. Ah, oh, they have a reach. They have oh, reach. No. They got yeah. it. They got big old giant scythes is what they got. Uh, it's gonna go for one freezing scythe attack on you. It swings towards you and it manages to hit. And as you are hit by it, you feel cold rush up your body. You take a total of seven damage when it hits you. I think I'm gonna help Arden take out this one over here because getting rid of some of these boys might be good. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Zephyr Strike. And then I'm gonna go for an attack on the... Yes. You fire, you hit it, oh, yeah. <laughs> you strike it, the uh, Hell's um, Ptolemaea, it acts as if it got struck in the back and like steps forward a couple of steps whenever you shoot it. Alright, Marilene, do you know you're on deck? So, uh, yeah, I'll try, a, I'll try a shatter at that uh, pillar number five. You fire it, it hits it, uh, it that one hey. shatters, breaking apart as that creature also is also destroyed. One moment, though. Hooray! As it dies, its body begins to twitch and writhe. It just suddenly erupts into this cold energy that bursts out of its body. Arden, uh, the sp it and the spaces around it, you would most notably see, get covered in these icy spikes with it in a one that resembles the one it was trapped in to begin with, piercing out of the ground where it is, its body mangled and destroyed inside. Uh, you get the sense that if something were next to it when it died, then uh, they would probably get caught up in that and either restrained or hurt by it. This area is now all difficult terrain. Number two <gasps> is up next. He's going to get to here. It rushes over, gets oh, in place there. Yeah! It. Oh no! It stops. You see it like take in a bunch of breath. It, it inhales to the point where its body begins to inflate, and it is going to breathe a cone of ice that's going to hit all oh, of you. So, rolling this against you, you all take 11 damage, cold damage, as well as on your next turn, uh, you can take an action or a bonus action, but not both, as ice coats your body and freezes your movements. Oh, that... I know. Oh, You just got ice cucked, bro. I super <laughs> did. <laughs> you okay, Gino? You look like you're freezing up. That's funny. That's real funny. <laughs> Hit him! <laughs> That is my heckin' thing. My movement. Eat shit. You attack, that hits. Nice. You strike it, it hits it, you see one of them, the one that had come from it, convulses, being hurt by it. You get a style point, too. You do get a style point. I do, point. which I'm gonna use uh, after I action surge. Ah! <laughs> so, hiya, and hiya. You strike it, you hit. Heck yeah, die. You strike Please. into it, carve into it, dealing 14 more damage as it, again, like, you know, it gets knocked to the side, almost falling down, catches itself with its scythe, piercing it into the ground, and pushes itself back up into a standing position. 
I'm gonna spend a focus point to cunning vertical to disengage. That's smart. That. Yep. Because that was my bonus action. I'm just gonna hang out here behind Gino. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Just peering yeah. out from behind him. Yep. He's. Listen, he's three feet taller than me. I'm basically invisible. I now. probably have cover there. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Number three is gonna go. Number three is gonna look over at Arden. It's gonna take a step over towards you. Are you gonna. Steps into my range. He does! I'm gonna get him. Do it. Get him. Yeah! That's a hit. Take that! You strike him, it does nothing when you hit him. As you hit him, your weapon just needs to deflect <laughs> off him as if he's impenetrable, but it does stop him as per Sentinel. However, you're still within range. But he doesn't need to be <laughs> He's going to As soon to as I get Sentinel, you put enemies that don't even care! <laughs> right he strikes at you, he hits you with the first one. <laughs> ah! Hits you, you take <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hit me? Why? <laughs> I did not expect the You <laughs> seven <laughs> damage goes for second attack. I did not hit it him. It misses. I did not. I did not. not. <laughs> second one doesn't hit you. Oh, no. thank God. Gonna target that space right there. Oh no. Oh, oh Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Marile. <laughs> Roll the effect. Mm. I hope you get the stunned one again. I hope I get the uh, you cast slow. <laughs> what are they thinking about? You did <laughs> Why not the target of the space? You <laughs> didn't. <laughs> you take six psychic damage. <laughs> this ring is not going well. You for point you today. it. You, there's a f just a feedback, just a loop of psychic energy comes back into your mind, and you grasp your head filled with non-thoughts. The floor hurts. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna run, and then I'm gonna go down here around him. Okay. I can't protect you. This is the <laughs> this is the right idea. Back up <laughs> to the top. The top. Me. Being this hell's. No, what? <laughs> no. That hell's. Me. Who is going to step up to here? And oh, they're going no. to use their freezing breath on the two of you, and on their- and <laughs> on their friends! So uh, and on their friends, in <laughs> incidentally. Yay. You're going to take that damage, uh, you're going to take half a manual, and the, those three are all going to be affected by it. So... Oof. Boop! You guys all take- OOF! 18 damage to Marile, 9 damage to Emmanuel, the other two take no damage. But, they are affected by the same action bonus action issue, however it's not. That big of a deal. They only do one action yep. anyways, which is multi-attack. Alrighty then. It's time to it's time to hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, taking four damage, here we go! One! Thank God! <laughs> one! Thank the gods! <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna beat up this rock. <laughs> oh it fuck. Just misses. Of course. They have ten AC. <laughs> Number five is ah. going to make an attack against Emmanuel and against Marile. Is going to go. Oh no, they attacked an arc. This was the worst decision I could have made. It misses. <laughs> it misses Emmanuel. And hits Marile. Oh. Oh no. Strikes dealing. All right, Marile. No! As you are hit, Marile, as you reach zero hit points, uh, as this I don't believe has happened within one of these before, uh, as they are struck, they vanish. Marile, you oh, are. Marile is dead! And they're hit, and they are wiped away from this test. Marile! I just see Marile disappearing in front of me. I see this motherfucker. I'm going to move down here uh, so that I'm within range of this boy if he wants to attack somebody that isn't a child. Um, but note, noting that I that we have to kill these things and there's, uh, I'm going to I'm going to shoot this fucking pillar. Gotcha. <laughs> Fire away. Hi. -ya. Yes. Yay! So I killed the one. That number five Marilei. is destroyed, and as it is killed. It is going to erupt into ice. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh fuck! It's not like you guys didn't know. Get the fuck out of there, Manny! All right. Bad day, bad day, bad day, bad day. So everybody day, that day, is day, day, everybody that is surrounding it, which is two people, it is going to go boop. Dexterity saves from both of you. You succeed, uh. Emmanuel. So you are not restrained. It does restrain the other one. Right. As it turns that area into ice, that area becomes difficult terrain, but you avoid being caught by the ice that suddenly fills that space. 
As the other one gets caught, its body gets frozen up to its waist, and it begins struggling and hitting the ice with its own ice scythe. Instead of uh, trying to fight, it turns, it like pulls its body. You see it contorting its torso back towards you. You see its chest inflate as it breathes in. It is going to target all three of you. No, oh you God. fucking bitch! I Says Gino. Niccolo and Theo, you failed. Gino, you succeed. Woo! You'll take half. It does six, so Gino, you take none. Uh, Theo and Niccolo, nice. you take half, and you guys are limited to the uh, bonus action action on your turn. And it is going to remain there, unable to break free. Gino. Alright, which one were you, you little bitch? <laughs> Fuck this one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, attack. Hey that is a hit! Whoa. You strike it, dealing... Oof, uh, dealing 15 damage that is also... That correct! Yep, it causes it to contort within the ice. Alright, and then <laughs> unleash incarnation. And, uh, I'm gonna use that style point I just got. And hey That's a hit. Die! It doesn't kill it. But it does, uh, does hurt it quite a bit. Fio, you're up. Action or bonus action? I'm going to take an action. Katana, bop! That's a hit! Hey. Okay, so I want to... I get that. Arden, grit, yes or no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yep, it, you, know, yeah. you know what's coming. It erupts into ice. <laughs> Yup! You succeed! You're fine! Hooray! <laughs> I did it! Good job, Phil! Thanks, Adin! Number four is gonna so, go after Emmanuel. You ain't got that I'm great. I love how I keep <laughs> trying to get in the way of ones that are gonna fucking like. It like, misses! Like, First attack idiot. strikes at you, it just misses nice. you. Goes for the second attack on you. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! You take 16 damage. Ow! Oh, he realized <sighs> that my head stopped my head! Oh, <laughs> oh god. No. Alright. Uh, all right, big play manual time. Big, big strats. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Oh boy, I'm in danger. Um, <laughs> the pillars, if you try to hit them, they'll do nothing. Listen, I'm not talking to you, mister. The <laughs> 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 <Hey>, manual! <laughs> I'm gonna use my bonus action to Misty Step. Okay, where are you going? <laughs> oh my God. Misty Step over, uh, over here. I'm so fucking happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then for my action, I'm gonna use the ring and I'm gonna target this space. Fireball it. Both will be it. I'll just target the pillar. Gotcha. And ready for yeah! You cast invisibility on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Die! <laughs> <laughs> One day it will be fireball and it will be at the worst time. <laughs> That's how this ring works. <laughs> Arden, Nicolo, you're on deck. And then I'm gonna fucking get that pillar over there. Get it. Do it. Yeah. You strike it, it takes 12 damage from that attack. Bonus action. Yeah! Oh! oh! <laughs> Woo! Hey, double D4! You do another oh 19 God. damage to it! <laughs> Give him a stick! <laughs> <laughs> bang, 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 just like hitting it with the back of it, just pulling it repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? I can get here, and I'm going to summon another echo over Hecken. Uh, right, one space down from that. Uh, style point, attack! hey -ah. That hits! Nice! Be -ah, Jimmy! Be -ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hiya, Jimbo! Die! <laughs> you deal 15 damage to it! <laughs> you want some die? I'm gonna fucking use an unleashing carnation. Go for it! <laughs> 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 that <Nice>. got us. <laughs> you deal another 15 damage to it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull up Majesty and I'm gonna shoot him. Do it. <laughs> That hits. Oh no, 
have any style points to make it better. So we're gonna just uh, hunt ya. You fire it. Uh, it takes Woo! it. That one is killed. Uh, it leaves an ice thing behind. Right. There's nothing around it for it to hit. Uh, yeah. It does take the extra damage from Magistrate that is dealt to Constructs. Nice. Hey. Good to know! Manny, don't kill me. <laughs> Manny. Manny, please. Manny. <laughs> Manny, we, think have about friend, we have think best about friend this. coffee, Manny. <laughs> You're right. I'll target the opposite side of the pillar. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and Animal <Right>. appears. <laughs> Dennis the second. <laughs> you make you fire. You fire the beam. Like a blast of magical energy surges towards the pillar. The blast of magical energy becomes a deer mid-air, which is hurtled towards the pillar. It very anticlimactically slams into the side of the pillar and then falls to the ground motionless. I run over here. Uh yup, that's me. Alrighty. Gino. Okay. I could um, I can't exactly get super close. A lot of difficult terrain between you and it. But, uh, I'm gonna actually summon Gino Jr. Uh, 30 feet away. How far is that away from me? Three, that four. Thing. It's exactly 30 feet. So, yeah, I just summon him next to that thing. And, uh, heckin... Gino Jr. Gino Jr. <laughs> <laughs> heckin' another, some more attacks coming at your ass. Bow! That's yeah, a crit for you. Yeah, it is! Die! Damn. It does. You cause your echo to appear. It comes down, strikes into it. It carves the pillar in two. As it does, you see the creature erupt into a larger blast of ice from the force of the attack. As it does, there's a cracking noise as all the various bits of ice all shatter. The ice fragments entering into the air, and the stone, uh, the uh, snowy sphere that was surrounding the area comes back in again. It focuses on the center and peels back, putting you guys back where you were. Marile! You immediately regain consciousness uh, with one hit point outside, then you are like oh. the others. You are restored to health as you all benefit from a long rest, as you do every time you win one of these. Oh, neat. Hooray! Hooray! But you are, the last thing you register, Marile, is having been defeated by this, and then uh, reappearing outside with everybody else. What appears to you? Uh, appearing floating just in front of the mercurial face, which once again, it like recedes, uh, you see. Uh, several items begin floating in its place this time. One blue orb, two more golden orbs, and, oh, and one large vital star. We almost have one golden orb per party member now, it's great. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the deer is going to run off into the wilderness and be free. <laughs> you better run. Be free, Dennis the second. <laughs> I'm going you to do two. On I'm you. only going to do You're one. Longer. I'm going to do one thing for it as it leaves. Uh oh. No! It's going to roll try to bite Arden? <laughs> it's going to try to bite Arden. Yeah! You take seven damage as it then proceeds to run into the wilderness. <laughs> Arden! 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 Another deer? Arden! Oh. It went out of your range. I yeah! <laughs> you want to attack it? Attack that fucking deer and kill it. <laughs> Use the sentinel! Roll, roll an attack. This is the real boss. <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll damage. Four. You kill it, it dies. <laughs> <laughs> How many red orbs is he worth? None! <laughs> I stand next to Arden, looking up at his bite wound smugly. <laughs> you guys take the blue orb and you use it. I'd like to know who would like to do the rolls for it this time. All right, do you know? So mm -hmm. let's do this in order. Uh, go ahead and quickly uh, roll me the 1d4 plus 2. Okay. I'm fucking up. Yeah! I fucked it up. Everyone's max HP is going to go up by 3. Gino, 1d10 <laughs> plus 4. Okay. Oh, well, that better than good. nothing. Yeah. And now uh, your hit points will all go up by seven until your next long rest. Nice. Alrighty, and that's that's the blorb. Arden, why I stab myself at every turn? Because I'm a blood why, hunter. No there you go. What I never learned. And Arden, boom. why? Arden, why? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Why? The blizzard around you begins to pick up more. Um, it's getting a bit thicker, but you can see the path that leads up to this place where you saw Inanna, and you can faintly see the red flickers of fire up there. That's where we're going to stop tonight. But you guys can see the direct uh, path to finally catch up with Inanna and claim whatever it is you need to be able to survive the blizzard before heading to the other cities to try to finish your business there. Inanna <sighs> went that way. So, YouTube side, I believe that's where we're going to say goodbye, and we will see you on uh, next time you see us. I can't remember what the next thing that would go up is. This is Monday? Saturday? Yeah. See, you, see you on the re-upload of the Tuesday stream. See you on a day. Goodbye. Yeah. All right. Okay. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.